Hello and welcome to a screencast about finding the average value of a function. So we have a kind of definition here for us, um, but it says if f of is a continuous function on the interval from a to b, then its average value, so that's what we're going to be looking at today, on that interval from a to b is given by the formula 1 over b minus a times the integral from a to b of f of x dx. So this integral here is what we've been looking at recently, and that's the area under the curve. We first used Riemann sums to approximate this area, but then we also can use some geometry to figure out what this area is exactly. Okay, then this also consists of an interval. So this b minus a here is actually the length of our interval. Okay, all right, so just to kind of get an idea of where these pieces come from, so that way you can see that. All right, so here's a function g of x. This should look very familiar from a previous screencast. So it's kind of a funky function, but we have some lines, and then we also have a semicircle here. Um, so they're all pieces that we can actually figure out what the area is. So remember again, this average value function is defined to be the area under the curve. So we need to figure out what that value is first. So that's going to be all of this area here, this negative area down here, and then this positive area over here under the circle. So in a previous screencast, you calculated that area. I'll just roll through really quickly what that answer was again. Um, let me get rid of all my scribbles so you can see things. Um, but yeah, so if you already know what these answers are, that's fantastic. Go ahead and pause the screencast or fast forward if you want to, um, to figure out then what this area is. So we broke this integral up into three pieces, or no, I'm sorry, more than three pieces. One, two, three, four pieces. Um, we're going to go from 0 to 2 of our function g of x dx. Then we're going to go from 2 to 3 of our function and then we're going to do the integral from 3 to 6 of our function, and then we're going to do the integral from 6 to 8 of our function. And the good news is, is then this gives us the overall integral from 0 to 8 of our function, which is really what we want, okay? So that's our one piece of our average value function that we need. Okay, so as you roll through some of these values, let's see, so we have from 3 to 2, so we have a rectangle here, and then a triangle here on top. So this gives us a value of 5, plus, let's see here, we've got a really skinny triangle, that gives us a value of 5 halves. And then we have another triangle down here. Let's see, the width of this base is 3 and the height is negative 2. So that gives us an area of negative 3. And then finally we have our semicircle. So that has a radius of 1 if you were to split that diameter in half. So that would have an area of pi over 2 because it's half of the circle and the radius is 1. Okay, so anyway, these are all of our different values here. So when we total these guys up, oh, and I just realized this one is not correct. This is not 5. I thought that seemed kind of small. Let's see, so we do 3 times 2, which is 6, plus 2 times 2, so that'd be, that's 8. Okay, I apologize for that. I had a 5 in the brain because I was doing probably the 8 and the negative 3 in my head already. <laughs> that's what I get for working ahead, right? Okay, so anyhow, when you go ahead and figure these values out, um, let's see, we got some fractions in here that we can work with. So that's going to give us 5, which will be 10 over 2, plus 5 over 2, plus pi over 2. So that's going to give us a grand total of 15 plus pi all over 2. Okay, so again, this was the area, the area that was given to you in the previous screencast. But now we need to add to it the average value, okay? So then we're going to need to multiply by 1 over the length of our integral. So this is our interval. This is our area. I'm sorry, I didn't give myself enough room here. So my average value is going to be 1 over 8 minus 0 times my integral from 0 to 8, g of x dx, 
which is going to give me 1 8 times this 15 plus pi over 2. So putting these two fractions together, we multiply, so we're going to get 15 plus pi all over 16. And that would be the average value, then, of this function. Okay. All right, the other graph you guys looked at, then, on a previous screencast was this function here, h of x. So again, we want to figure out the average value of this function on the interval from 0 to 6. So we're going to break this, again, up into three integrals. So if we look at the integral from 0 to 6 of, oops, our function is h this time, not g. Sorry about that h of x dx, that's going to be the integral from 0 to 2, because that's a fairly nice shape of h of x dx, plus the integral from 2 to 4 of h of x dx, because again, that's a nice shape. And then finally, the integral from 4 to 6 of our function, h of x dx, because again, that's a nice shape. Okay, so these nice shapes, so now we need to figure out the areas of them. So from 0 to 2, we have a rectangle, and that has a base of 2 and a height of 3, so that gives us an area of 6. From 2 to 4, we have a triangle, and that has a base of 2 and a height of 3, so that's going to have an area of 3. And then from 4 to 6, we have a negative area because it's below the x-axis. So that has a base of 2 and a height of negative 3, so that's going to have an area of negative 3. So that's going to give us a grand total of our area to be 6. Okay, but now we want the average value. So the average value of this function on the interval is 1 over 6 minus 0 times the integral from 0 to 6 of our function, h of x dx. So that gives us 1 6 times 6, which gives us a grand total of 1. All right, thank you for watching.